Hi, it's Rudy from Better Music. Today I've got in front of me the Yamaha Clavinova, this CLP635. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about two pianos, though, in fact, two and a half, sort of three. The 635 and the 645. And the reason for that is, in doing this video, what you're hearing on the recording, um, whether I had a 635 or a 645 in front of me, you'd be hearing exactly the same thing. The 645 it's the same piano in appearance as this. There are only a few, there are only in fact three differences between this and the 645, and I'll explain those at the end of the video. Those of you who are also looking at the CLP 625, you might want to know what, why would you step up to the 635 or even the 645, so I'll cover some of that as well. So let's have a look at some of the basic facts. So lovely looking piano, nice range of finishes. One of the most important things about this piano is that the touch is really good. So it uses Yamaha's fully weighted uh, GH3X action. The GH3X action is fully graded, uh, so it's heavier at the bottom than it is at the top. It also features uh, synthetic ivory and ebony key tops. So it's really grippy under your fingers. It feels really, really good. There's also escapement in the key, so you feel the little click under the bottom of the key. So all in all, a really nice uh, featured action. Key action on the CLP 635, the one we've got here in front of us, is the same key mechanism as on the 625. Um, but what differs greatly uh, when you get to this series is uh, the level of complexity of the sound engine. So we do have uh, the Bosendorfer Imperial on here, and we have the Yamaha CFX. What differs in comparison to the CLP 625 is that this also uses VRM, which is Yamaha's virtual resonance modeling. So the detail to which the sound engine calculates the rim resonance, body resonance, soundboard resonance, aliquot resonance, all the elements inside a grand piano, the computer calculates exactly how to reproduce those based upon what you're doing with the pedal and based upon what notes you're doing in, or in fact the virtual strings of the piano. So it's a lot more detailed than what's in the model below, being the 625, where they have recordings of string resonance and damper resonance to give you the realism, but the computer doesn't calculate it like it does with the VRM. So that's a really important difference between this and the model below. So getting back to the most important sound on, on this instrument, uh, the piano sound, we heard the Yamaha CFX in the intro. Let's now have a listen to the Bersendorfer Imperial. It's quite a different sound. It's, it's a very rich, warm sound, very gutsy as well. So let's have a listen. So you can hear the way the sound's decaying, the VRM's in there, really calculating exactly how the sound's meant to decay and giving you all the resonance. Um, that's very accurate, so it works really well. But the Bersendorf sound is really nice to hear. It's quite different from the CFX and offers uh, a really nice palette of sounds that's different to that let you play different types of music, so it's really good. Okay, so I'm going to reference back to the 625 again because some of you might be watching this piano to decide whether you're going to spend the extra money over 625 to go to the 635 or the 645. For the moment, just think in your minds that we're comparing 625 and 635, and at the end I'll tell you exactly what the difference is with the 645. So we talked about sound engine, the VRM making a big difference to the sound, 256 note polyphony, which is the same as on the CLP 625. We also have an LCD display, so we can actually see what's going on, we can see the name of the sounds. Um, we have USB device, so you can record uh, to USB. Uh, we have USB host to connect to the Smart Pianist app. Smart Pianist, I should say. Um, now that's one of the big differences again between this and the 625 is the 625 doesn't use Smart Pianist app as you may have noticed if you've watched the CLP 625 video. This does and gives you full functionality with that app for this piano. Um, so that's a big step. You also have piano room on here, so you can actually get in here and adjust the settings of the lid, the brightness, uh, and control all the parameters of the sound, which you can do via the app as well. You've also got more control over the touch of the piano. There are more touch settings for the key action, so you can adjust the sensitivity to suit exactly your playing style. It gives you a more detailed response, because the more control you have over the key mechanism and the sound engine, also the sound engine being more um, in-depth, 
you do get a different sound out of the piano. So that's also a really important feature. There are some other little things like the pedals give you more control. You don't just have soft pedal, soft and you don't sustain like on the 625 or like on a normal grand piano. On the 635 slash 645, you can edit the functions. You can assign rotor control for an organ sound. You can assign play, uh, stop and play of a song file. Um, there's a bunch of different functions it does, which is unique um, and, and different from the 625. Before we go on to some of the other features, I'll just show you some of the other sounds. We're not gonna go through all of them. There are quite a few more. Uh, it's just over 30 sounds for this piano, as opposed to only 10 on the CLP 625. So we heard some acoustic pianos. Um, there's, a, there's a really nice warm ground in here. Nice electric piano as well. Electric piano. A really nice soft electric piano as well. I'm not going to go through all the sounds, there's over 30, we've heard some of the principal sounds, um, but I've got to show you the piano and the strings because the really nice Bersendorf for all the CFX mixed with slow strings is just stunning. Okay, so there's a bunch of the sounds. We've gone over a few of the specs. I'm gonna finish up by explaining again the difference between this and the 645 and just a few more things. Another thing you've got on this over the cheaper models is there's a 16-track, 250-song sequencer or recorder. So you can actually record all your own songs on here using the inbuilt sounds, save them to USB and actually save them in the user memory as well. You've got the USB device. You can record straight to USB. Using Smart Pianist, you can even record audio straight to the Smart Pianist app. You can also record audio straight to the USB device. So lots of tech features, but Yamaha haven't skimped. Unusually on this piano, even on the panel underneath, you've got old school five pin MIDI ports and they've put in, out and through, which is normally what you'd only see on a lot of high end like, professional synthesizers. But Yamaha have put it on there. So just in case you want to hook up your old Yamaha DX7 or any other sorts of synths, you can actually hook them up. There's a mini jack line in so you can run audio back into the piano so the sound of your other keyboards will come through the speakers as well. So they haven't sort of forgotten about anything. They've put stuff in that not all the other digital pianos have in this price point. You've also got proper stereo left and right output. So if you do want to record it, which is what we're doing here, you're hearing out of the outputs, not the headphone socket. So the recording quality is usually a lot better. Okay, so to wrap up, let's go over this again. This is the 635. We've identified a lot of the differences between the 625. I think for the price uptake on this over the 625, you're getting an absolute truckload more for your money. Yes, it is more expensive, but it's not ridiculously more expensive. And um, the feature set, especially including Smart Pianist and the sound quality with the VRM, the virtual resonance modeling, the 16 track recording, the nice cabinet, is a fair bit um, that you're gonna get for that extra money. In saying that, let's think about this being a 645. Just imagine it is, because from the camera angle you're seeing, you wouldn't tell the difference. It looks exactly the same. It's the same cabinet, same dimension, same look, same everything. Here are the only differences between this and the 645. Biggest difference is the key bed. So this is a GH3X, uh, which is a fully graded hammer action, as I mentioned earlier in the video. The 645 uses an X model up, which is the NWX wooden key action. So it is really good action. And a lot of people will go up to the 645 just because that action is really, really good. It's got a skatement as well. Feels really, really top notch. Second feature that's different if you go up to the 645 is there's Bluetooth audio streaming. So you can stream audio from your device to the piano. That's the second thing. There's only one more thing that's different, and that is the speaker system. On this particular piano, the, uh, power, the power output of the speakers is uh, 30 watts a side, so it's a 60 watt speaker system using two speakers. When you go to the 645, it's a 50 watt time two speaker system, so 100 watts, 
and it's a two channel system so there's four speakers so the separation when you're listening to it in front of the piano the speaker system is quite a bit different on the 645. For the purposes of this video if I had either one here VRM is the same all the sound engines the same you'd be hearing exactly the same thing albeit I might play it slightly differently because the action's a little bit better on the 645 but apart from that you're getting the full picture of what the 645 could be in terms of this video. I hope this has been a help. I hope you've enjoyed what I've done on the piano. And um, if you've got any questions, hit us up in the comments or give us a call. Or if you're in Canberra, come and see us in the store. I'll see you next time.